PowerPoint family, so good to be with you all. How many of you are happy and excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Would you stand up on your feet? And um, we're going to worship the Lord together. And before we do, there's a verse I want to share with you from Psalms 105. It says, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. And this is the time that we get to proclaim the goodness of God. And if he's been faithful to you, say so. If he's redeemed you, say so. If he's brought you out of the pit, say so. Come on, let's praise the Lord for his goodness and the ways that he's come through for us. Are you guys ready to worship the King tonight?
of joy. So let's step into that joy tonight. Get those hands together. Sing, we worship. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Come on, shout his praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is sure to be in this place. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We sing, we sing to the one who heals. We sing to the one who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. Sing it again. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. Come on, this is our story. We sing this out together. And we were the beggars. And now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. And now we're running free. We've been forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing. Come on, we sing. And we were the beggar, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We've been forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't. And we won't be quiet. No. We shout out to praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy. And we won't be quiet. Sing it loud. We shout out to praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord.
you that you've rescued us. We thank you for the cross. Let's turn our affection to Jesus, precious Jesus. We thank you for your blood. Thank you for the cross. We thank you for the cross. And we thank you that you rescued us. We thank you for the cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You've rescued us, you've rescued us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You've rescued us, you've rescued, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you've rescued us, you've rescued us, hallelujah. worshiping just continue to pour it out on the feet of Jesus continue to pour it out but I feel like God has a word for some of us in the in the room I think sometimes in a moment like this it's easy to just go into the, go through the motions and not really be present and I've done it a thousand times I've done it a thousand times but I want to tell you something Jesus is here Jesus is here in the room. The one who saves, the one who redeems, the one who raises the dead, the one who heals the paralyzed man, he's here in this room. Oh, so don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let this moment, don't, don't let it be another church service that you just came to check off a box. God is here to meet with you now. And I feel like he wants tonight to awaken a deeper desire for him. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper tonight. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper tonight. I believe that God wants to call us to a deeper place in worship. And that's for everyone in this room. And it's my prayer that this could be say, said about every one of us. These, this prayer that the psalmist cries, this cry of the psalmist heart. In Psalms 84, it says, my soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. And I believe that God wants to call every single one of us into what that looks like, to awaken that desire, awaken that hunger within each of our hearts, that we would be so ready to worship that we couldn't be quiet, that we had to shout out His name. So we're going to sing this song, and it's so simple. It just says, I just want you and nothing else, nothing else will do. But I want to encourage you, take this moment and sing to Jesus. We're going to sing. It goes like this, and sing with me when you catch on. I just, I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else. Nothing else will do, I just, I just, let it come from your heart. And nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will, sing it out, sing it. I just want, yeah, and nothing else, yeah, and nothing else, nothing else, let us fall more in love with you. I just want, oh, we want you and nothing else, no, and nothing else, and nothing else. Come on, let's press it, press it. I just want, let it come from deep inside, let it come from your heart, and nothing else will do. Like he's the only one.
strip it all away So all we see is your face We just want you, God. Jesus, we just want you. Nothing else matters. At the end of the day, nothing else matters. Even at the start of the day, nothing else matters. We just want you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence with us today. Thank you that we get to experience you. We love you, God. Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. One of my favorite things to do when we worship together is just to take a second to listen sometimes and just hear the body of Christ singing out as one voice and imagining the face of God smiling as we are looking at him and loving him and him loving us. And it's such a beautiful thing. Well, welcome to Centerpoint Church. Hello, my name is Daryl. <laughs> If we haven't met before, I'm our First Impressions Director. You guys uh, can say hi to somebody next to you, take a seat, say hello, introduce yourself. We are a family here. If you're new with us, I want to uh, say welcome and thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here. We'd love to meet you uh, in person if you are uh, if you're okay with you know everything's kind of different with COVID. But if you're here, I imagine you're okay with being around people. <laughs> we would love to meet you in person. We have some blue tables outside in our welcome center. Come out there, come say hi. Um, I'd love to meet you uh, face to face. And uh, if you if you are not new but you're just kind of looking to see ways to get connected, you want to know what that looks like, you can also stop by the Blue Tables in the Welcome Center as well. Our mission as a church is to love and lead people to a life-changing connection with Christ. Amen? If you know that, say amen. amen. All right, that's the mission as a church, as our church, Centerpoint Church. That's what we're here to do. And a great way that that can happen is joining a team or joining a small group. One of the easiest ways for joining a team is taking CP 101. That happens every Sunday at the 9 a.m. service. So that's our onboarding process for any anytime you want to volunteer or join a team. Go to CP 101 and you'll learn about the different ways you can get involved and get connected in that way. Um, for other ways that we can grow and connect as a church, I have a couple things I want to invite, invite us to, to participate in. Firstly is Connecting Point Lunch. If you're new or, once again, just kind of wanting to know what it means to be a part of Centerpoint Church, maybe you've been around a while, but you haven't really taken a step to get connected, I want to invite you to Connecting Point Lunch. It's a free lunch, just a time to hang out, get to know some of the team and the pastors, and Pastor John will share about the heart of the church, what we really are about, what it is that makes us us. Secondly, we have baptisms next weekend. <laughs> baptisms are always an exciting time. If you have said yes to Jesus, if you've dedicated your life to Jesus, but you have not been baptized, baptism is your next step. 
So sign up to get baptized. You can sign up at the blue tables as well um, outside, or you can go online to mycenterpoint.tv. But if you haven't taken that step to be baptized, I invite you to take that step. It's happening next weekend during all of our services. And lastly, we have Rooted started um, starting this Monday. It's a 10-week discipleship a small group time to learn what it means to read the word, to read scripture, to pray together, to grow as community. So uh, if you're looking to get connected in a group, Rooted is a great place to start. All right, and all those things you can do by going to the blue tables or going to mycenterpoint.tv. We're going to continue with our worship as we give to the Lord today. I want to share a scripture in Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 says this. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. There's something amazing that happens when we act out of generosity. There's something amazing that happens. I've never um, done anything generous and then regretted it. (laughs) Because when we act out of generosity, we are actually walking in the way that God lives as well. He is the most generous one that there is. And as we practice generosity and take that posture of generosity, we are actually reflecting him to each other, to ourselves, or reminding, that, reminding us that God is a generous God, and I want to follow him, so I'm going to be generous. And how much more so is this true when it comes to our tithes and our finances, when we give to the Lord himself? Because he is the most generous one who's given us everything, and what a joy it is to give back to him. There are three ways that you can give we can uh, give the boxes. If you're here in person, there's boxes by uh, the different doors that give boxes there. And you can give online at mycenterpoint.tv slash give. Or you can text the word give to 951-397-2254. Would you join me in prayer as we consecrate our giving this evening? Father, we thank you that you are so generous to give everything for us. Thank you, God, that you made the most generous act by sending your son to die for us and to live so we can know how to live and to resurrect so that we can live in that resurrection power. And we take this moment to give back to you all it is that you have given to us. We consecrate our giving and our finances to you. We say that you may bless it, have your way with it. We love you, Lord. Amen. Well, hey, welcome. Good to see everybody tonight. I'm so glad you're here with us today at Center Point Church. And if you're joining us online, welcome. Glad you are, are here. If you're on the patio, I know it's, uh, it's a, a little bit of glare in, in the screens, but I'm glad you're there too. So good to see you. And um, I just wanted to say, if you're in the room and you can look to your right, you can see the, the door finally got installed. Yay! It was like the final thing that we were, one of the final things we were waiting for. <laughs> hey, I want to I wanna get you to uh, do a little bit of a workout for a minute. I want you to join me for a little bit of a workout. And here's what I mean. A few minutes ago, I know that a number of you, you were singing your heart out and you got your spiritual muscles moving, but others of you, uh, you were, you were kind of quiet. And I just want you to have your chance too, to get a little bit of a, a workout, spiritually speaking. And so I want you to do this with me with the word of God. Some of you, you just chose not to sing because you think I'm not a singer, but you are somebody who can read. I believe this. And so I want you to just uh, take a look at some scriptures with me and say them out loud. Get your workout on. Psalm 31, verse 21. Say it nice and loud. Go. Praise the Lord. For he has shown me the wonders of his unfailing love. Come on, praise the Lord. He's shown you the wonders of his unfailing love. He poured out his own blood upon the cross so that you would know for all eternity the price has been paid for you. His unfailing love covers you from beginning to end. His unfailing love is the foundation for your life. His unfailing love is the house you live in. Come on, praise him for his unfailing love. Yes, Psalm 40. Keep the workout going. Ready? Psalm 40, verse 5. Ready? Go. 
O oh Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite them all, your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. This is the truth. God has done so much for you and me. If we tried to remember all the wonders he's done in our lives, we'd probably forget the majority of them. But he's done great things for you and me. And tonight it's, and today it's important for us to stand together and say, God, I recognize you've done great things in my life. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, turn a blind eye to it. I'm going to say so. You've done it. Psalm 77. Keep the workout going, especially if you weren't singing before. It's your chance. Ready? Go. You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. It just says you are the God of great wonders. We're in the middle of a series called The Wonder Switch. Well, it all begins with recognizing who God really is, and he is the God of great wonders. Everything that you can possibly conceive of or perceive in this universe ultimately has come from the mind of God himself. He is the God of great wonders. Just say, you are the God of great wonders great wonders. Say it. You are the God of great wonders. Uh, the workout isn't done yet. Exodus 15, verse 11. Come on, say it strong. Go. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders? Who is like you, Lord? Just say it. Who is like you, Lord? Ah, you know what we just did? We just, we just activated the wonder switch with a workout. And what we just did is an example of something that we need to choose to do if we're actually going to be disciples, followers of Jesus, who, who move beyond passivity and, and awaken our spirit within us and allow an activation of the spiritual muscles. I'm eager to see us actually flip the wonder switch in our lives. And, and to do so requires our active engagement of ourselves with God in moments like this, coming together and something like just simply declaring the truth of scripture out loud. Did you feel something begin to stir inside as you did? Okay, so my challenge to you would be, don't let this just be a weekend church service thing. Let it be your way of life. Activate that wonder everywhere you go, every chance you get. I want you to open up the Bible to Matthew 18. And while you're turning to Matthew 18, just get your Bible open or or your Bible app open, but Matthew 18 is where we're going. You know, lately I've been uh, doing some of my meetings with people by grabbing a cup of coffee and then taking a walk. And so uh, a while back, I don't know, four or five weeks ago, I was having a meeting with Daryl, who was up here before doing the hosting. And so we met down in the press, got a cup of coffee, and we were walking Old Town, you know, talking through all the stuff, the, you know, church stuff and, and, and those kinds of things. And, you know, very serious, you know, you know, working hard, kind of, sort of. But we were, you know, talking about all of the, you know, things that we needed to talk about. And there was a side street as we were making our way back, and I just thought, oh, let's head down that way. I haven't been down that street, at least not that I can remember. And so we're just walking down Old Town. We went down this side street. And then across the street, while we were walking that way, suddenly this, this caught my eye. There was just this, this, uh, this thing. It was a swing. And it was just hanging there, like just hanging there. And it seemed to be crying out to me, John, come here. You know? And as I went a little bit closer, I realized it was a man-sized swing. Like it was built for a dude. Like it's a big swing on a the biggest tree in Murrieta, as far as I know. And, and it's right in the middle of the public sidewalk, as if to say, this swing is for public use. Just go for it. And so Daryl's in the middle of a very serious topic about very serious matters. And all of a sudden, he's like talking serious. And all of a sudden, he looks to his side and realizes, I'm not there anymore because I'm, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm like pumping the kick and pulling it back and gazing up at the tree and the limbs and like shouting. <laughs> and I couldn't even help it. I couldn't help myself. You know what I mean? Like there was just something about that. I just, I couldn't keep on trying to be Mr. Serious Man. Like, I just needed to let, let, let it go for a moment right there in Old Town Murrieta. And, and, and all of a sudden, like, big bad boss man, Pastor John is just little Johnny boy, like, <laughs> flying through the air, you know? And, and I couldn't help myself. But by getting on that swing for those few minutes, I did help myself. I really did help myself. I felt, literally felt, like just a little bit lighter afterwards. 
And probably, I would guess that Daryl saw me a little bit differently after that moment. Because you, you just don't look the same when you're halfway upside down and your hair's all flying out. You just don't. You know? And maybe that was what was needed for him, for me, for, for our spirits. And, and I think that maybe when we get to Matthew 18, it's that kind of thing that I think Jesus might have had in mind. And so with all that, we'll just jump right into Matthew 18, the first verse. It says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a little child to him. And he placed the child among them. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. <laughs> so the context here, right? The context is that uh, you know, it, it, the, the scriptures kind of flow, right? We stop them up with chapter 17, chapter 18, but in the original writings, it's just one flow, continuous flow. And the moment right before this, here's what had happened. We call it Matthew 17, the last few verses, but you know, the tax collectors come on the scene and start saying, hey, doesn't this guy pay his taxes? I mean, that was what they wanted to do. They wanted to ask about Jesus, and they wanted to talk to Jesus about politics and power and taxes and government, and let's get all riled up, Jesus. You know, that was the kind of the feeling of that moment, you know? Doesn't this guy pay his taxes? And it's funny, Jesus, you know, Jesus, who, by the way, he's living in the Holy Land during a time of Roman occupation. Like, you want to talk about a political climate that, that the believers should be angry about, right? That would have been it. But there's very few times that Jesus even says anything about it, even though it's the most big deal thing that was going on. Jesus hardly ever addressed it, but this is one of those rare moments where he did. And the guys come up to him, hey, what are you going to pay his taxes, temple tax? Come on, it's required by the Romans. And, and Jesus says, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, listen, uh, Peter, go fishing. Just go fishing and drop in a line. You're going to pull out a fish. It's going to be a coin in the mouth. It's going to be enough to pay the taxes for both of us. There you go. Done. <laughs> Bye. Like, that was it. That was Jesus' big moment about let's talk about. And, and it's, it's just, you got to catch this, right? Because it, it's a moment where it, you, it's almost as though the, the people on the scene were trying to say, come on, come on. Let's talk about the occupation. Let's talk about those Romans. Let's talk about the taxes. Let's talk about Newsom. Let's talk about the president. Let's talk about, yeah, let's get riled up. Come on. You know that good feeling that we get when we get good and mad talking about all this stuff. Come on, Jesus, let's do it. And he, he just doesn't go there at all. He just, it's almost like he just, he shuts it down with this weird thing about, here, just uh, uh, go fishing. Even his answer to say go fishing is almost a way to say, y'all need to settle down and maybe go have some fun because you're really pressured up right now. And then the very next thing he says is this little thing about, hey, hey, but you, you want to talk about, okay, you want to talk about power? All right. Okay, you want to talk about power. You want to talk about uh, power and how, how things work. You want to talk about, I see that you want to talk about the kingdom of God. That is the right topic. Let's talk about that. And you want to know about the kingdom of God? Let me tell you how you can experience the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's like this. It's like this. <laughs> it's like this. And, and so I don't want to underestimate this topic. Jesus was passionate about this. And, and he talked about this a lot. And I came with a message tonight. And, and it's simply this. It's time for some of us to change it up and be like a child. With faith in our heavenly father. That's the main idea of this message. I want you to just say it out loud with me one time. Just say it. Go. Change it up and be like a child with faith in your heavenly father. There's something in the teaching of Jesus 
in which he's passionate about this because it's in all the Gospels. This isn't one of these one-off things that you could go, ah, well, it didn't seem to matter that much. No, he speaks about it in Luke 18, verse 17. He speaks about it in Mark chapter 10, verse 15. He talks about it in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. He talks about it here in Matthew 18. I want you to see this. Jesus is passionate about saying to his disciples, anyone who says Jesus is Lord, his, part of what he says is, I need you to know how valuable it is to change it up and be like a child with faith in your heavenly father. And this moment is one of those moments where he's saying so. Do you know that even in modern science, there's a whole branch of modern science called neoteny, and it is a a, a branch of science dedicated to describing the reality that, that the human creation was designed, genetically designed, for a sense of playfulness and fun. apart from every other kind of animal or creature, like this is unique in the human creation, part of our genetic design by God that we're actually designed. That word neoteny, it comes uh, from a couple of root words, which basically means keeping the newness. Like that's the sense of it. And when some of us begin to be feeling old and tired and crusty and worn out, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call anybody that, right? But we start feeling that way. It's maybe because we haven't been keeping the newness. We haven't been actually following Jesus. Because he's the one who said, if, if you want, if you really, if you actually want to experience the kingdom of heaven, anybody? Anybody, would, if you just heard this much, Jesus saying, if you want to experience the kingdom of heaven, would you raise your hand and say, yes, how, 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 what do I do? Then will you listen to what he has to say? Because he says, if if that's what you want, then this is what you do. Let me just make sure we heard it again. Verse two, uh, it said, he called a little child to him and placed the child among them and read the next verse out loud with me. Go, say it. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so this is your savior, the Lord Jesus, mighty king of kings, the Lord of lords saying, "Ah, this really matters, maybe more than you know. But I want you to make sure you took note of something. He did not invite us to be childish. It, it It is... childlikeness that he's inviting us into. And that's very different than being childish. To be childish is to be self-centered and self-absorbed and uh, unthinking and uh, that kind of thing. That's not what Jesus is talking about. He's inviting us to be childlike. That is to be filled with a sense of wonder and trust and imagination and play and lightness of being that allows us to really trust God. That's what he's calling you and me into. That's what he wants for us. Made me think of, like, when I was a kid, we had a a backyard with a bunch of pine trees in it. And my my dad had had the pine trees all trimmed. And there was just this massive pile of these pine branches, huge old pile of pine branches. And as a 10, 11-year-old kid, that, to me, became a wonderland. Man, I turned that thing into a hundred different things. Basically, what I did was I, I carved a, a tunnel underneath those pine branches with a big kind of cave at the end of it. And that was every single day after school. Every day, that was where I was. I mean, one day, it was a space station, and I was the astronaut in charge of it. Another day, it was a castle, and I was the king defending. And, and another day, it was like a, a wolf's den, and, and we pack a wolves lived deep in there in the wolf's den. And I mean, every day it was something different. And do you know what? Each day when I came home from playing out in my pine branch uh, fort in, in the yard, do you know how I felt when I came home on those days? I felt, I don't remember distinctly, but I'm pretty sure it probably felt pretty lighthearted, pretty imaginative, pretty much at peace, pretty calm, pretty joyful. Because being a kid like that allows those kinds of things to flourish in us. But something happens to us, doesn't it, when we grow older? Those kinds of things end up getting shut off by by the, I would say, the schemes of the devil who has come to come against everything Jesus has for us. And if Jesus has for us an invitation to become like little children, of course the devil would want to come in and shut that down and make us cynical, skeptical, angry, bitter, outraged, right? 
And this is antithetical to what Jesus says is almost like one of the secrets of living in the power of God, experiencing the kingdom of heaven. And so I don't want to ignore it because I like the feeling of getting riled up and outraged. I don't want to ignore it because I'm used to being cynical and skeptical. I don't want to ignore it just because I've embraced familiar spirits. Do you hear what I'm saying? (laughs) Instead, I want to deal with those familiar things and get rid of them so I can get into what Jesus has for me, a a, a becoming uh, uh, like little children. So again, my message today is to change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly Father. I even tried to make it like a little poem so you might remember it. Change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father. See how that works? <laughs> let, me, let me have you see this verse again. Verse 3. It said, G- Jesus is talking. He, he said, truly I tell you, unless you change. Everybody say, unless you change. Unless you change. Truly I said, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you know, so often we want to come to God and say, God, I want you to change this. God, I want you to change her. Make her more like I I think she ought to be. God, change him. Make him stop being such a, and these things. (laughs) God, change this circumstance so it's easier for me. (laughs) I mean, sure, and, and I believe that there is a place in the heart of God for us to have that kind of communion with him where we ask him for those things. But I think maybe in some ways, even through this word of Jesus, it's like God is sometimes answering us and saying, how about you change instead? How about you change? Because unless, that was Jesus' word, right? Unless you change and become like little children, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. It sounds like a nice kind of happy little verse, doesn't it, at first? And then you start really thinking about it and you recognize, oh, unless has some weight to it. And it really does have some weight to it. But it's a beautiful invitation for every one of us. There's an opportunity to be restored. There's an opportunity to be made new. There's an opportunity for the newness to be kept That's what Jesus is inviting you and me into, unless you change. And really, I think at the core of it, the change he's inviting us into is a change in our sense of the relationship that we have. And what Jesus is after, one of the things he's after for you and me is that we would recognize ourselves as children who are loved by our heavenly father. This is one of the passions that comes through in the ministry of Jesus, in the life of Jesus, is that for you and me to be healthy human beings, at the core of that is to know ourselves as children who are loved by our Heavenly Father. And I think over the years, maybe some of us have kind of gotten our heart around the peace about our Father, and we've maybe embraced the, the revelation of the Father's heart. Maybe we've done that. And we've said, okay, I get it. He's a father. And maybe even some of us have made a little progress to the point where we're willing to say, he's my Abba. And we'll use that biblical word, Abba, because it's there in the scriptures. We cry out, it says in Romans, Abba, Father. And we might be willing to say that word, Abba, because it sounds mystical in in Hebrew and Greek or something. But some of us are even a little further into that. And we'll just say, Daddy. And and we make other people feel weird because we're like, oh, my daddy loves me. And we're like, you're 40. (laughs) Are you sh- <laughs> Yeah, I mean God. You know, so, but it's the truth. But now, now I think there's more. And I think it's wonderful to embrace the Father's heart and the revelation of the Father's heart. But I think Jesus is also wanting to invite you to experience a revelation of the, the childlike identity that he has in mind for you. And it's crucial, I think, that we get there. And some things get in the way of this. Like for me, some of the things that get in the way of actually embracing my, my sense of myself as a child, with a childlike faith that I change and become like a child, I know it sounds demeaning to even say it, but it is the idea that came from Jesus. One of the things that gets in the way for me is um, what you think of me, you meaning anybody. 
I start getting in my head about, well, what do you think about me? And what do you think about me? And what do they think about me? I, I, I lose my capacity to be in that childlike uh, stance before God. That's one of the things that gets in the way for me. Another thing that gets in the way is physical pain. Ah, physical pain and health issues, you get in your mind about those things and it can, it can take you out of that place of, of thinking of yourself with, uh, with a childlike disposition and being in that childlike posture before God. And that's something else that can, can get me out of that place of being like a child before God or just the pressures of life and work. Anybody else, right? You get the, the pressures of life and work bearing down on you. That can snap me out of that childlike posture pretty easily. Uh, the the relationship problems, financial stress, that stuff can knock me out of posture. You know what I've had the last uh, few weeks, I was dealing with a herniated disc and so I was going to a chiropractor uh, three times a week. And uh, I, I had never really been to a chiropractic, maybe once like 10 years ago or something. I didn't know what I was in for. But when I was out of alignment, Dr. Blake, O'Connor, he knew just what to do, and, and he, he snapped, crackled, popped me, like every time, three times, and every single time caught me by, by surprise, caught me off guard, and snapped me up, and, and, and I felt like he broke me, but actually he fixed me. He was bringing me back into alignment. I needed that adjustment. And, and when I find myself dealing with the things that I just mentioned to you, and the list could go longer for some of us, I, I need more than ever, even in those moments, to come back to that place of childlike trust in my Father. I need to, in, in the face of those things, I need to make the choice to change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly Father. And that is what I'm asking you to do as well, to make that the choice that you put in place in your life. In the midst of the financial pressure, you change it up and be like a child with faith in your heavenly father. Because here's the deal. When, when I do that, I, I know that the bills have to get paid, but I know that my dad is the one who's got the resources in all the world. I <laughs> don't have to worry as much about it. When I find myself dealing with the, the pressures of life, but, but when, I, when I change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father, then the pressures of this life, I, I don't necessarily feel them as something that I've got to bear because I think of those as something that my, my dad's got my back with regards to. When I change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father, then when the physical pain kicks in and the discomfort on the physical front comes, I feel a comfort from the touch of my father, my dad's got me and he's comforting me. Do you see what I'm saying? There's power for victory in life in this stance of doing what Jesus said, becoming like little children so I can experience, enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now back to Matthew 18, uh, just one more time, verses 2 and 3, it said, he, he called a little child to him and he placed the child among them. Actually, I, I want to I read this from the New Living Translation. It's a little bit different, and it puts it like this. It says, Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. And he said, I tell you the truth. Say this part out loud with me. Ready, go. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you'll never get into the kingdom of heaven. Now, here's the thing. This, this, uh, this is the same verse. It's just a different translation. The NIV puts it, unless you change and become like little children. And the New Living Translation says, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children. The New King James would say something like, unless you be converted, right? And it's this word, strophe, that, mean, that is, is translated, you could, you could translate it to twirl around. You could translate it literally to physically turn. You could translate it be converted. You could translate it repent, as in repent from sin. And I think that's why the New Living Translation puts it that way. And... Maybe that's what some of us need to hear. Unless you repent from your sins and become like little children. It may be that for some of us, it would be a good thing to hear the New Living Translation translation of that word. Because the truth is, we are allowing ourselves to be captive in sin. And we think we're free, but we're not. We're stuck with it. We're stuck with the guilt and the shady feeling and the shamefulness feeling of it and, and the grime of it and the pattern of it that's grinding us down. And, and Jesus is saying, I, 
I want something better for you. Unless you turn from your sins, and it is possible. You can, in fact, turn from your sins. You don't have to stay enslaved by your sin. You don't have to define yourself by your sin. And I don't care whether that sin is the sin of idolatry or the sin of addiction or the sin of some kind of sexual perversion or the sin of racism or the sin of rage or whatever the sin might be. It's time now to turn from it. Why? So that you can become like little children and you can really enter into the experience of your heavenly father's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And so for somebody right now, this is maybe the word from God for you. Uh, Turn from your sin. And he says that I believe with an invitation to do it and experience real freedom. You know what I think about when I think about a child? when When I hear Jesus inviting me to become like a little child, here are the things that come to mind. I think the context that Jesus has in mind is how we can be in relation to our Father, our Heavenly Father. And there are a lot of things about kids, right? But, but one, one thing for sure, it's joyfulness. That comes to the surface first for me. Kids, you don't have to make them be joyful. That tends to just kind of be there. And uh, humility. Kids know that they need you. Kids know that they don't have it all. Kids know that uh, I, I, I'm totally dependent. And that's a third ca- ca- characteristic, dependence. Dependence. Just, I know that I'm dependent on you. And closeness. I love it. Sometimes, I, I, there been, this happened a few times, but, uh, you know, I, I remember this moment where this little kid, like, turns and, and, and on a playground, runs over to me and grabs hold of my leg, and he's holding on to my leg, and I'm like, who, who is this child? And I look down at him, and he looks up at me, and he has get this fri- frightened look. He's like, ah, and he runs away, because it wasn't who he thought he was, right? But yeah, kids just are like that. You know, they're just ready to be close, ready to be close, especially to the father, right? <laughs> the one they think is the father. And kids are, are playful, that playfulness that lighthearted, imaginative playfulness. What a gift. And when you can enter into that aspect of being like a child, playful, lighthearted, probably some of your best ideas are going to flow. You're probably going to come up with the solution to the problem you're facing once you let things go a little bit and allow yourself to play. And I mean play in such a way that doesn't require any kinds of illicit substances or beverages. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean real childlike, lighthearted, free play. And kids are are truthful, tend to be pretty honest, pretty straightforward, maybe in surprising ways, but they know they don't need to play games or, or pretend and hide. Kids are teachable. Kids are trusting. Kids tend to be shame free and Kids tend to be bold, and I want all of that and more for me and for you, and I think so does Jesus, and that's why he says, listen, unless you change and become like a little child, you, you won't enter into the, the kingdom of heaven, and so I'm asking you right now to consider your own life, and where have you gotten hung up on cynicism and negativity and skepticism and bitterness and outrage? in such a way that it has blocked you up from being the lighthearted kid that Jesus envisioned for you to be, that's flowing with imagination and playfulness and solutions and new ideas and readiness to engage in new relationships and hang out with some new people and make something happen in this world because that's the disposition of a child. Jesus wasn't looking for childishness, but childlikeness that would allow you to enter into the next negotiation you have with a free and easy spirit that was so winsome that they couldn't even help but say, yeah, let's sign up. I want to do it. Jesus envisions you with such a lighthearted, playful kind of disposition that people are going, I want to hire you. I want you on my team. In fact, I'd like you to be the boss because you're so much fun to be with. Like, I think Jesus is looking at you and envisioning that you could be the kind a person that is, is, is so, so imaginative that you, you, you spend enough time with him that in a lighthearted way that you're coming up with the products that need to be developed for this world. And it came out of that childlike disposition before God. Come on, somebody. This is what you need. This is what Jesus is inviting you into. And to do it, here's what you do. You change it up and be like a child with faith in your heavenly father. Change it up. Say change it up. When I say change it up, I mean change it up. That cynicism, change it up. That negativity, just change it up. 
that skepticism, change it up. That outraged, bitter, change it up. (laughs) Change it up and be like a child, faith in your heavenly father. This is what you can do. Change the way you're looking at things. I I love the way the the message translation puts Matthew chapter 6. It usually says something like, the eye is the lamp of the body. And it's like, huh, what do I have? In the message, it puts it like this. It says, your eyes are windows into your body if you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body's a musty cellar. If, if you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you'll have. <laughs> I was talking to a guy last week. Um, don't worry, uh, you're not here. <laughs> I was talking to a guy last week, and the whole entire conversation... Uh, He had his face like this. Yeah, well, what I read on the news was, well, I saw a report from the CDC that said, and uh, well, what what I saw in the news the other day, and someone forwarded me another article about, and and, uh, yeah, and even when I was telling a joke, I I told a joke, and then he was like, ha, 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 ha. Like, still, I'm like, dude, you're going to get some serious crow's feet on your forehead if you keep your life like that. (laughs) And you're not a lot of fun to be around, by the way. (laughs) Like, come on. I know it's bad out there, but we can choose to lighten up. We can. And actually, I think that's what Jesus had in mind. It's okay. Unless. He said it like that. Unless. Unless you, be, you change and become like little children. You, you won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. You might enter into the kingdom of men. And the, in the kingdom of men, oh, we like to get mad. We like to talk about what we're enraged about and stay pissed off about everything. And Jesus is going, that's, but that's not the kingdom of heaven. That's something. Not going to deny. That's something. And, and, and there are moments where we, 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 I'm not trying to say there aren't moments where we need to, don't need to engage that aspect of things, but Jesus is inviting somebody back nevertheless. Matthew 18, one more time, verses 3, 4, and 5, it said, and he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest. Whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest. This is Jesus saying, you really want some insight about how things work? And who's going to be the greatest in my kingdom? You're looking at this. Right, Right here, this kid. Like this. Simple, trusting, imaginative, Playful, dependent, close, yeah, like that. Unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, therefore, whoever takes this lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. You know what we usually do with this Bible verse around church? We, We use this Bible verse to guilt people into serving in children's ministry. Ah, you laugh because you know. (laughs) That's what we usually do with this part of the Bible. Hey, you hear that? Go work in CP Kids. That's what we do. But that's not the intention. The intention from Jesus was come be different. Come be like these children. Come be lighthearted. Come be playful. Come be imaginative. Come be willing to trust me. Come be close to me. Come be comforted by me. Come and enjoy what I can give you. Yeah, that's, that's what we're invited into. And the, the results of a, of a childlike faith are, are life-changing. When you have a childlike faith, you can believe God at his word. And all things are possible. I believe it. Because I've got a childlike disposition about me. When, I have a, when, when I'm able to change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father, I'm able to believe that, yeah, th- th- though there are those coming against me, more are with me than are with them. When I have a childlike faith, I am able to believe that my God does, in fact, have the cattle on a thousand hills, and therefore, he is able to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, because I've got a childlike faith that allows me to actually believe him for that. I can believe like David did. Yeah, there's an army coming against me, but with my God, I could scale a wall. Watch, you know? And this childlike faith empowers you. It is one of the secrets to living victorious 
It really is. That's, I think, what Jesus is saying to you and to me right now. And so I want to take that main idea of this message and I want to flip it and make it personal. And it's just simply this. I will put it like this. I'm going to change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father. I want you to say that with me. Say it. I'm going to change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father. Say it again. I'm going to change it up and be like a child with faith in my heavenly father. I want that to be in you. I hope, I just, I just hope that we could be in touch with what Jesus is actually calling us to in this moment. You know what, after all, we're all just kids on the swings, you know? <laughs> kids on the swings, kicking our feet up and enjoying the breeze, knowing we're safe. And maybe we need to remember the words of that old song that some of us might have used to sing when we were kids. Remember it? We sang... He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Why don't you just sing that with me right now? Imagine you're on the swing over here and sing it. Go. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Come on. <laughs> you just go down Washington, and it's on the left, one of those side streets on the left, in case you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a, it's, a, it's sometimes the best thing we can do. It's just lighten up. Let things go. You know, Jesus... Jesus is here right now in this moment, I think, stirring something up for some of us because we've gotten so used to the heaviness. We've gotten so used to the skepticism. We've gotten to be close friends with cynicism. We've just gotten used to these things and decided that that's just how we're going to be. We're just going to be grumpy. We're just going to scowl. We're just going to be negative. <laughs> It doesn't have to be that way. You can change it up and be like a child. Faith in your heavenly father. You know, at, the, at the beginning of the Gospel of John, it, it says this in John 1, 12. It says, to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And so for somebody right now, I want to affirm something. Have you at some point put your trust in Jesus Christ and said, yes, Jesus, I believe in you? Because if you have... You're, you're children of God. That is who you are. And, and Jesus is saying, yeah, become more like that. Become more like what I've already invited you to be. For somebody else, though, if you're thinking to yourself, I don't know where I am with all of this. I don't know if I'm a child of God. I, I would hope so. I want you to know so. And the scripture we just read said, to all who believed in him and all who accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. It happens by faith, as you once and for all say, okay, Jesus, I believe in you. I I'm turning, like we read in Matthew 18, 3, in the New Loving Translation, I'm turning from my sin. And Jesus, I'm turning to you. Jesus, I believe in you. That changes everything. And I want that for somebody right now. I wanna pray that God would do some spiritual awakening for us. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for your word, and I thank you, God, for the, the passages in the Old Testament like Joshua and charging a city of I and killing people and getting all warrior-like. I love that. But I also love this. I love this, Jesus, that, <laughs> that you did something so unexpected with these grown people, these adults who were ready to get charged up about things, and instead you... You said, hey, it's actually like this. And you grabbed this kid and said, it's, it's about becoming like a child. Dependence, trust, imagination, playfulness, freedom, lightheartedness, belief, closeness, all of that and more. And so Jesus, I pray for right now a stirring up of all of that and more for every one of us. I pray, God, you'd push back the negativity, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the outrage, all of those familiar spirits. And I'm calling it. That is what it is, my friends. 
You may not have seen it that way, but I want you to ask Holy Spirit right now, have I gotten used to some familiar spirits? Ooh, because maybe that's not the best for me. Maybe a childlike heart would be better. So God, I pray for a stirring up of a childlike disposition among us, not childish. We want to be mature sons and daughters, but with a childlike disposition about us. A, a, a clear and open heart before you, knowing you as our daddy. <laughs> yes, God, I pray for that. I pray that you'd stir up a revelation among us of the, the childlike heart. We have said yes. Many of us have said yes over the years to the revelation of the Father's heart. But now, Lord, I pray for a release and an impartation, a stirring up of, of the childlike heart. Yeah, the freedom of it, the playfulness of it, the joy of it, the lightheartedness of it, the freedom of it, the fun of it. Woo! Bring it, Lord. Bring it, Lord. I pray you'd bring it, God. I pray you'd stir it up. And God, I pray too that uh, for some of us, Lord, it would bring healing. That where we've gotten so used to the heavy. Lord, right now I pray for a, a, a change. Okay, so while we're praying together, if you're a believer, but you would say, you know what? I think that describes me. I've gotten so used to the heavy. It's, it's become something so familiar to me. Could you take a moment right now and imagine all the heaviness that you've been carrying, the negativity, the anger, the outrage, and there may be good reason for those things but carrying it as your daily disposition isn't doing you any good. Could you imagine in this moment with me, could you imagine taking that and just handing it off to God? It's a burden to you. Could you take it and just say, God, would you take this heaviness from me? Right now in this moment, would you just do that? Imagine yourself a seven-year-old you. Right while we're praying together, could you do it? Just imagine your, your seven-year-old self, you, and if you could. And just kind of take that heavy thing off of your chest and just hand it to Jesus. Can you imagine him right now in this moment, what he's doing for you? Can you imagine him in this moment, how he's responding as you're just offering this heaviness, the, the, the pain of it, the negativity, the anger of it, the hurt, whatever. Just hand it. Can you imagine Jesus? What I see in the spirit right now is this love coming right from his heart. He's just reaching in. He's grabbing hold of that negative stuff and dematerializing it. Just, <laughs> that's what I saw. Ah, thank you, Lord. Now, for somebody else, if you, if you are here today or you're online and you're going, I don't know where I stand with God. I want to know that I'm right with God. It, the way to be right with God is through faith in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you get to receive a right standing with God by faith in Jesus, by what Jesus did on the cross for you. And if you would say, I don't know if I've ever given my life to Jesus, then I want to invite you to do that right now. I want to invite you to turn from your sin, to repent, and to turn to Jesus in this moment, and to ask him to forgive your sin and save your life. Would you ask him to do that? If that's you, if you would say, I think I need to actually do that so that I would know that I'm right with God and that I get to anticipate heaven when I die and the power of God here and now. If, if that's you, if you would say, I want to do that. I want to say yes to Jesus once and for all and know that I'm right with God. Right now, I want you to raise your hand with me. Just raise it high. That's you finally saying, I need to say yes to Jesus. You keep your hand up for a moment. And while your hand is raised, I want you to take this moment and if you're joining me online in this, you just type it into the comments. Just type in, I am giving my life to Jesus. And you pray with me and say, Jesus Christ, I believe in you. Everything starts there. Just say it with me. Jesus Christ, I believe in you. You can say it again. Jesus Christ, I believe in you. Say it one more time for good measure. Jesus Christ, I believe in you. I turn from my sin, I repent, and I turn to you, Jesus. I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross. I believe you're alive, and I believe you love me. And so I receive your love right now, your forgiveness, your gift of salvation. I receive it gratefully in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand up together? Stand up with me. God, thank you that you have awakened something among us in this time. And I pray, God, that you would allow the newness of it to last so that we could enter into 
the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you sing out with the team in this song?
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Abba Father, Abba Daddy. <laughs> He's a good daddy, amen? amen? Amen. Well, we bless you, church, to, to walk as children of God, to be childlike and find that wonder in the kingdom as you go about your weeks, not just the rest of this weekend, but when you start work, when you're with your families, when you're with your friends, when you're hanging out, whatever you're doing, bless you to walk with that childlikeness and to see the kingdom everywhere. Amen. All right, if you want to, if you're interested in any of those things I mentioned earlier, I listed off a few different things, Connected Point Lunge, Baptism, CP 101, and Rooted. If you want any more information, stop by the blue tables. I'll be out there as soon as I put this mic down. All right. Have a good night. God bless.